Hi, I'm Chanel, a developer advocate at Google. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Google Chat REST API. Let's see how the fictional customer service team from Symbol Group uses the Google Chat API to streamline their incident management workflow. When an incident is escalated in the Symbol Group's incident management system, we want to use Google Chat to collaborate as a team and solve the problem efficiently. To implement this, we will use the Google Chat API to create a Google Chat space, add the relevant members, share information about the incident, create a summary of the chat messages using Vertex AI, and once the problem is solved, the created space will be deleted. For our demo, we have already created a Google Cloud project. Next, we enable the Google Chat API and disable the interactive features since this chat app does not need to support interacting with the users in the chat space or slash commands or dialogues. Authentication and authorization are prerequisites for using the Google Chat REST API. You can choose to either authenticate with user credentials or with the service account. Check out the video Understanding User and App Credentials in the Google Chat API linked in the description below to learn more about authentication. In this video, we will be using user credentials to authenticate. You might be wondering why we are not using a service account to authenticate. As of the making of this video, certain chat API methods can only be used when authenticated with user credentials. Since we want to be able to create a Google Chat space and add users to that space, we have to authenticate with user credentials. When user credentials are used for authentication, a consent screen is displayed to the user that includes a summary of your project, its policies, and for any app for use outside of your Google Workspace organization, the requested authorization scopes of access. The consent screen is configured in the Google Cloud Console. Go to Menu, APIs and Services, OAuth Consent Screen. For the authorization, we choose the scopes you see on screen. The Google Chat API is built on HTTP and JSON, so any standard HTTP client can send requests to it and parse the responses. However, the Google API client libraries provide better language integration, improved security, and support for making calls that require user authorization. The client libraries are available in a number of programming languages. By using them, you can avoid the need to manually set up HTTP requests and parse the responses. In this video, we will be using the Node.js library for our code samples. Back in our GCP project, we create an OAuth client ID by going to APIs and Services, Credentials, Create Credentials. Select OAuth Client ID and Web Application from the Application Type list and name your OAuth2 client as you wish. We add the URI of the incident management system that will be sending the authentication request. Lastly, we add the URI to where the users will be redirected to after they have authenticated. We finalize the creation of the OAuth Client ID with Create. Once you have configured the OAuth client ID in the Google Cloud project, you can use whatever OAuth library fits your needs to store the access token. As we previously mentioned, we want an escalation of an incident to trigger the creation of a Google Chat space. To achieve this, we will be using the spaces.setup method and passing in several parameters to populate the name, description, and turn the history on for the space. At this point, we also pass in the users, which will be members of the chat space. Since we are using user credentials to authenticate, we retrieve the caller of the function to obtain the refresh token from the backend and exchange that refresh token for the access token. We use the information from the incident management database to retrieve the necessary information to identify all users that will be added to the space as members. With this information, we can use the People API to retrieve the unique identifier of the users and send this information as a parameter to the Chat API. Currently, when using user credentials to authenticate, you can only send text messages and not cart messages. 
On screen, you see the JSON representation of the text message and how it appears in Google Chat. The users can use this dedicated Google Chat space to quickly and easily communicate and find a solution for the issue. Seems like the problem has been resolved. What about if you wanted a resolve button to be clickable in the chat space? In this case, you could create an interactive Google Chat app because this adds interactive elements like buttons, slash commands, and more. At the top of the screen, we have linked the video showing how you can create a Google Chat app. The Incident Manager marks the ticket as resolved in the Incident Management System. This action triggers the listing of all the messages sent in the Google Chat space associated with this ticket. We receive the response in the form of JSON, and we extract the relevant information. We then use Vertex AI to get a summary of the conversation. The last step in our use case is that of deleting the dedicated Google Chat space. Deleting a space also deletes the space's child resources like messages posted in the space and memberships in the space. If you want to learn more about the Google Chat REST API, check out the developer documentation linked in the description below. Leave us a like if you've learned something new in this video. And if you want to learn more about Google Workspace development, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.